Hey YouTubers, I'm Jacob, and this is a how-to video for installing a 500 watt pure sine wave power inverter in your camper. So first off, while shopping for an inverter, you wanna make sure you're looking at pure sine wave power inverters. And that's really important because a lot of new electronics, laptops, computers, smartphones require pure sine wave power inverters rather than stepped. And reason being, if you use a stepped inverter with your electronics, they could damage them or render them useless. So you wanna make sure it's pure sine wave. Second of all, you're gonna to wanna to calculate what your wattage needs will be. Now you're gonna to wanna to add up all your devices that you plan to charge all at once to determine your total wattage for your power inverter. Today, we're showing a 500 watt power inverter. The reason is all we're charging is a few laptops and a monitor. Now, if we wanted to run some larger appliances, then you may wanna look into a 1000 watt or 3000 watt power inverter. So another thing that you want to check when shopping for a power inverter is to make sure that it's compatible with the batteries that you plan to run in your RV, camper, fifth wheel, you name it. Another thing too is with this Best Tech 500 watt power inverter, we've got two of these. This one we run in the truck and we move it between the bed of the truck and the cab. And it's good to note that with these 12 volt DC plugs, it has a good note here. Please make sure your load is under 150 watts. Now to get the full potential of the 500 watt power inverter, you're going to need to hardwire it and ground it to the frame of your camper so that you can get the full potential of its use. Here's a list of materials and tools you will need to complete this project. Well today is our big electrical run day. So we're going to be wiring in the power inverter and we are tapping off the main batteries that we just installed. We have two new deep cycle 12 volts that are wired in parallel to give us more battery capacity. And in the event, if we lost one battery, we'd still have 12 volts to be able to operate. So I'm gonna have one cable off the negative and one off the positive, and we have to run them to the very back of the camper with 10 gauge marine grade wire. And I'm trying to figure out my electrical run because factory, goes underneath the panels. I always like to plan my connections out and make sure I don't need to make another run before I start. These two, it's got the wrap on it, the shrink wrap on it. That'll be outside on the battery, and then we'll do additional on the outside, and these are all marine grade adhesives. These are all my interior connections, and then this will be the new ground connection. And I'm just going to do a self-tapping stainless steel. Barely see the fish wire trying to get through. Oh, do you want me to push it through? Yeah. It's like way Where up Where do there. I have to go? On the other side of the steps over here. same time. Where's that screwdriver? Oh yeah, it's over there. Is this 4 gauge or 10 gauge? 10. Because it's a 500 watt power inverter and not a thousand. Right, so we're installing a power inverter so we can use our fancy electronics such as laptops, mon t uh, laptop monitors. So we could work while well, the generator's not running. And Do you need electrical tape? Yes. Hold on. Two at once. Two at once. There we go. This is real, where the real magic happens. Thought it happened in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> it does. This is real electrical. Alright, so we finally pulled the cable through for the inverter and 
We're coming through or we've got an existing hole here and we're gonna come between the cabinetry here and our seal and mount the inverter. Boom, right here. So that not a lot of the noise is in our work area uh, and hopefully it doesn't overheat in here. But we can also use it for the outdoor kitchen if we don't want to run the generator. So it's a pretty good spot. That is a good spot. So we'll be working, we'll have our laptops and monitors plugged into that inverter. Yep. We're going to have a five strip GFI power and plug that will feed through and we'll just kind of feed it through in this corner and then have it down by our feet or in this corner. And so out here, all you'll see is that power strip. Sweet. Yeah. Our office is coming along. So I'm trying to make sure my wires here are long enough for where to cut it. So these are what's going to attach to the battery? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this and this is, is connected to the inverter? This will be connected to a power inverter and it's coming directly from the battery, our battery bank right here. So when we turn our generator on to top our batteries off, we're topping these off and this is pulling directly from our battery, so we don't have to have the generator running. Full time. Yep. Got it. What kind of batteries are these? I know these are brand new. We literally just bought these. Yep, these are new. They are group 24, which is really all we could fit in here. Couldn't quite fit two group 27s on the size or 31s or anything like that. So they're just deep cycle 12 volt wired in parallel to give us more capacity. So if one goes out, we can, if one goes out, we can test and see which one's bad and then uh, just use one battery to limp along and still be able to use our electronics. Where with our six volt setup we had previously, uh, the golf cart batteries were better for like discharging like often and a lot for solar, but uh, these are better for just long-term capacity. So, yeah. Okay, now we're about to run the ground wire. And I'm gonna run it through where I had the other wires, but I'm gonna ground it out to the frame inside here so it's totally protected. If I can get my hand in there, we'll see. But I gotta feed it down from the top tape it on and snake it through. This is where we're coming through. I'm just gonna reseal it from the top here. Important job of heat shrink in the heat.
straight up. Why are you so sweaty? It's, the sun is killer. It's July 3rd. It's a hot sunny day. Not too many clouds in the sky. Great day to be outside doing electrical and running a heat gun. <laughs> Never want to forget the uh, heat shrink like we did earlier. <laughs> Sometimes you won't get it on. Ooh, wasp just almost hit me. Yes, sir. Nice. One down, one to go. All right. You could start on this one. Okay. This is our ground wire that we just ran. So I'm gonna attach it to the frame with a self-tapping stainless steel screw so that if there's any kind of power surge, it will be grounded out. Cool. And won't ruin our devices. All right. to come out and do it from this side. Uh, and I guess we could do it to the bumper right here. We could wrap it around and do it straight to here. Try to be the easiest. Maybe tuck it up. Buddy. Can't forget this. I'm trying to get your sweat dripping on me. So you know that like this isn't even gonna. I know. You gotta kind of pin it up against the edge and then screw it down on it. Oh, is it like that? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, let me just put the screw in first then. I guess you could do that. Yeah. In the washer. Yeah, I have the washer too. This would have been easier if we just did it before we mounted it. Mm -hmm. After all that wiring and electrical work today that Jacob did, we have 
now get to see if our power inverter is working, which we'll again use for working remote. So let's see. It's running. Running? Yep. You can feel oh, the there's the green light. Is that power strip on? I'm gonna check it next. Okay, so the wiring worked. What you did today was fantastic. Here we go. So we'll use this to plug in our monitors and our laptops. One, two. Ah, it works. Yes. Thank you for watching this how-to video. I've included product links in the description below for products we use and stand behind. Post your questions and comments below. If you enjoy this content and want to see more, please like this video and subscribe to my channel.